Unfortunately, North Carolina's most famous fried chicken shack, Frankie's, is now closed. And the Curitan family, who always referred to their beloved fried chicken sauce as the keys to the kingdom, never wrote the recipe down. Rather, they had key members of the family memorize the recipe. And Brian, you actually went down to visit Ben and Nanny Mae's daughter, Linda, to see if you could weasel some secrets out of her. Right. I'm happy to report she did not give anything away. She didn't. The secret's going to go down with her. <laughs> but she was a wonderful woman. She invited us into her home. She made this wonderful chicken, set up the whole lunch spread, collard greens, baked beans, mac and oh, cheese, wow. all the way down to the sweet tea. Oh. She was wonderful. The food was great. And the chicken was spicy, so. That's all you got. Chicken That's was all spicy. I got. <laughs> Were you I like got tasting it and trying to break it down in your head? Yeah, I was. The key to any great fried chicken is the brine. I have two quarts of cold water here, and I'm gonna add a half cup of salt and a quarter cup of sugar. The brine is obviously gonna help season the chicken, but it's also gonna help it stay moist during cooking. So I'm just gonna whisk this until the sugar and salt are dissolved. So now that's dissolved and we could talk about the chicken. We call for three pounds of chicken parts in the recipe. And the best way to get your most consistent chicken pieces so they cook at all the same rate is to break down a whole four pound chicken. So I'm gonna use the weight of the chicken to do a lot of the work for me. Ah, huh, interesting. So I'm gonna pick up the leg and I'm gonna make small incisions in the skin. Then I wanna kind of bend it back to pop out that joint. Mm -hmm. And then just let the knife run against the bone. There's a rule in butchering that you always wanna cut the bone and not the meat. So I'm gonna do the same for the wing. A couple of small incisions up there until you expose that knuckle. I like that, holding the chicken up and letting the weight of the chicken expose the joint. Mix. I've actually never seen anyone do that before. Same on the other side. Oh, I'm a fan of this. <laughs> now, you want to remove the backbone. So this is the full breast. We want to turn it up on its end here. And we just want to cut on either side of the breast to break through those rib bones. Mm -hmm. I also like how you're using two knives. You use one knife, a really sharp, expensive knife, to do the fine work of cutting through mm -hmm. the muscle, but use a very inexpensive or even slightly dull knife to hack through the bones. That way, you don't ruin your good knife. That's right, it's very important. So we've removed the backbone. Mm -hmm. We can save that for stock. Now we're going to break down these parts into smaller pieces. So with the breast, we're gonna go ahead and split it in half. So we wanna make a couple of small incisions all the way down until we hit bone. And we're gonna take our heavy duty knife, put some weight on the tip of the knife, mm -hmm. and pop through that breastbone. Then we'll turn the breast to the side. We find that by cutting these in half, it helps the breast cook more in sync with the smaller thighs mm -hmm. and drumstick. So we're gonna cut this in half crosswise. It also gives you a couple more portions. Exactly, so a couple of small strokes until you hit bone, and the same method. You wanna put some weight down on the tip of the knife, and use the base of the knife to bust through there. All right, Julia, so this is one of my favorite cuts. It's separating mm -hmm. the leg from the thigh. If you look closely, there's a little line of white sinew running through here. And if you just run your knife straight through that, you'll go right in between the knuckle. You could use your good knife for that. And we'll leave the wings whole. Add all this chicken to our brine and we'll refrigerate it at least one hour or up to four hours. We don't want to let it go any longer than that because the chicken can end up being a little bit too salty. Okay, Julia, so the chicken's been brining for about four hours and we're ready to make our coating. Okay. We have one and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour here. And to that, we're going to add three quarters of a cup of cornstarch. This helps us achieve a more crunchy, crisp mm -hmm. coating. One teaspoon of baking powder. Which is unusual for fried chicken. It's gonna give it a little bit of lightness in that crunch. One teaspoon of granulated garlic, one teaspoon of salt, and two teaspoons of black pepper. Hooey! Don't be shy. <laughs> So we're just going to whisk this together. And to create all those nooks and crannies on our fried chicken that everybody loves to pick off and leave the chicken behind, we're going to add two tablespoons of water. Mm-hmm, very okay. clever. We're going to take this water and just rub it between our fingers till we create these little craggy bits of dough in our coating. You know when you make fried chicken and the last few pieces of chicken you batter always have a little extra coating? That's because all the water's come off the chicken before it. We're actually right. doing that ahead of time. So the first chicken is as good as the last. Now we can take our chicken from the brine and add it to our coating. So you're not draining it first or patting it dry? No, you want the chicken to stay a little bit wet so it lets that coating adhere. You really want to press this on and get a nice thick base of the coating. Yeah, on you're it. really working it. Yeah, a lot of recipes call for you to shake off the yeah. excess. Leave that excess on. That's all crunch. Save the crunch. I like to put them skin side up on the rack as well. Otherwise, they can get a little crosshatch pattern. Presentation side up. Right, right. Okay, Julia, and that's our last two pieces of chicken. 
that chicken needs to be refrigerated for at least 30 minutes or up to two hours to allow that flour to hydrate and really stick to the chicken. Okay, Julia, the chicken's been refrigerated for about an hour and that flour's had a chance to hydrate and really stick to the chicken. We've got oil set to 350 degrees here, and I know that because I have an instant read thermometer over there and it's actually reading a couple degrees over. Linda didn't use thermometers <laughs> for anything, not to tell when the chicken's done, not to tell when the oil's hot. She just had a feel for it. She had a feel for it. We're going to add half a batch to the chicken at a time. A lot of people are scared of the hot oil. Mm -hmm. and they'll drop it from too high up and it causes it to splatter. That's right. So it's good to just drop it in and let it fall away from you. We'll let that chicken go for about 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. And some of the thinner, smaller pieces of the breast and the wings, you might want to check around the 13 minute mark to see if they're done. For the white meat chicken, we're looking for 160 degrees, and for the dark meat, we're looking for about 175 degrees. All right. It's been about 15 minutes, and we could temp the chicken. Oh! <laughs> looks good, right? That looks so, amazing. This is a breast piece, and we're looking for about 160. On the nose. All right. So we'll transfer the chicken to a paper towel lined wire rack just to kind of wick away any of the excess oil on it. Mm -hmm. And then we move it over to the unlined side of the rack. So just a couple of quick turns. Right, because if you left it on the paper towel, it might get a little soggy. Exactly. We want to make sure that the oil comes back up to 350 degrees and we can go ahead and add our second batch of chicken and begin frying that. And again, that'll take us another 15 minutes. Well, that looks terrible. <laughs> 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 My mouth is really actually watering, yeah, waiting right, for this. Too. We're ready to dip this chicken, but first we have to make the sauce. Mm -hmm. What I have here is one and a quarter cups of Texas Pete hot sauce. It's a mm -hmm. North Carolina hot sauce. It's got a nice bite to it, but it's not overwhelming like a Tabasco sauce. So to that, I'm going to add five tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce, five tablespoons of peanut oil, and that's going to give it this nice velvetiness that'll help it cling to the chicken. Two tablespoons of molasses. Mmm. I think that's the only ingredient I probably got right from Linda's recipe. <laughs> and finally, one tablespoon of cider vinegar. And we can just whisk that together. And since our chicken is warm, we don't want to cool it down with a cold sauce. So we're going to microwave it for a couple of minutes. So if you don't mind passing me that lid. Uh, I like using plates as a lid in the microwave. I'm just going to hit this in the microwave for about two minutes. Even though it's called Texas peat sauce, it's actually been proudly made in North Carolina since 1929. And it's important to use this for North Carolina dipped chicken because it has a very vinegar sharp and not too spicy flavor that works in the sauce. We're ready to dip our dip fried chicken. So we have our hot sauce and we can just go ahead and simply dunk. <laughs> I didn't think that chicken could look any better. You know how this dip came about, right? Goodness. Yeah, they wanted to keep the chicken hot. That's right. That's oh. the last piece right there. Are you going to drizzle that sauce all I'm just going to throw this up? in the trash. Oh. Uh, you know, might as well gild the lily a bit and just go full bore right Goodness. over the top. <laughs> you are kidding me. This is both barrels of fried chicken right here. <laughs> oh, Brian, this chicken is gorgeous. And usually I don't eat fried chicken with a fork and a knife, but the sauce is making me pause. Absolutely no fork and knife oh, allowed. Really? Your, your forks are at the end of your arms. <laughs> Use those. I so, cannot hold back any longer. I don't recommend oh. you do. <laughs> the chicken is good and juicy. The coating is still crisp. And it's coated in that spicy sauce. I mean, man. I want to eat this in a dark room <laughs> on the couch with my shirt off. <laughs> Brian, you nailed it. Well done. So for the ultimate fried chicken, start by breaking down a whole chicken and brining it. For a crunchy coating, combine flour and cornstarch with a little water. Refrigerate the chicken and fry it in batches using 350 degree oil. Last but not least, dip the fried chicken in that iconic North Carolina sauce made with Texas peat hot sauce. From Cook's Country, the not so secret recipe for North Carolina dipped fried chicken. The ultimate fried chicken, I should say. Thanks for watching Cook's Country from America's Test Kitchen. So what'd you think? Leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make or just say hi. Now you can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. Alligator. <laughs>